today we're heading back to one of our favorite new gardens to discuss garden design and fun with containers. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned as we garden smart. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs, where every plant is performance tested, leaving you free to just enjoy. Find our award-winning shrubs at your local garden center. Memphis Wood Fire Grills. With the convenience of our patented IntelliBurn technology and convection oven cooking. Sear a steak, roast vegetables, bake cookies, or smoke meat using the power of Memphis Wood Fire Grills. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. You have to rely on your gear, the way it feels, the way it does exactly what you need it to do. The F-Pace, how Jaguar makes an SUV. Last week we took a stroll through an exciting new garden that was designed by our longtime friend Pamela Crawford and discussed the design structure and themes that make it unique. Today we'll take a closer look at the plant pairings that make for solid design as well as the placement and design of the many containers placed throughout the garden. Our journey today begins with gaining a better understanding of container design and the creative energy that goes into making a timeless work of art for the garden. Our friend Michael Carr has spent most of his life creating beautiful and iconic containers that have the ability to take any design from good to great. Michael, welcome back to Garden Smart. It's great to see you. You bet, Eric. I enjoy it every time. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is garden design. And we're also talking about that in the context of gardening with containers and how we design plants in containers. And there's a lot that we've got to think about. And your world is conceiving of what is the next great container going to be? You know, what kind of textures, colors do you look at that are going to excite people? Tell us about that process. In running Michael Carr Designs, I have a lot of different responsibilities I do, but nothing is more fun and more enjoyable than creating new colors and new designs, new textures and stuff like that. To me, that's the most rewarding because that's what really fulfills what I do. It's a challenge because I treat it like a fashion business. I treat the, my pottery business sure. like a fashion business. In, the, in that sense, I feel a responsibility to create new things for the ladies and whoever comes in each spring, the new collection, so to speak. So there'll be hundreds of items. So some of these colors I've created about 125 over the last 20 years, colors wow. and designs and textures and so forth. Some of them take years. You know, some of these glazes, they're not, you don't go to the paint store and get it, right? Right, you, right. you actually have to take different recipes. We have recipes of 12 to 14 different ingredients that we mix together. Some of the same ingredients, it just depends um, on, on what we want the, the thing to do. For instance, this piece right here, you see that running, there's two tones, there's two colors in it. Right. So it's different type of ingredients to make that run. Uh, then there's ingredients to make the colors and, you know, then the uh, consistencies and so forth. And then there's the part where you take that, that actual glaze that the recipes make and how do you apply it? Right. How you apply it makes the pieces look a little bit different. Yeah, and then the temperature that you fire it at. And you just got to do all those things that it's over and over and over and doing until, until you look at it and you go, wow, that's it. That's what I find so fascinating about the role that containers are playing today. And to your point, it's now fashion. We have to consider that this is part of the canvas that we are painting this design on now. And so this mm -hmm. blue plays into the very choices that we make plant-wise. Um, and it's very interesting to see, you know, how containers are kind of driving the way that we even think about plants and also using containers to create focal points in the garden. It's, it's so exciting. It excites me the same way that all these new plants that come out every year, there's that sense of like what's being released in the spring. Right. And in the same way, you know, we have containers where it's like, 
a whole new range of colors, textures, designs, shapes, e even even utility in the way that they might be used. It's, it's fascinating, and I think it's what it what makes garden design so much fun. Yeah, I agree with you. That's that's the purpose of what I do. We welcome Pamela back to the show once again to share with us her decades of knowledge and experience designing great gardens and containers. She'll also share with us some of the designs from her upcoming new book on container design. Pamela, welcome back to Garden Smart. It's so good to see you. It's great to see you, Eric. I'm loving watching this garden come together. And today we're talking about garden design and then also designing with containers and containers in the garden. Let's start with just an overview of this garden. I want you to talk about what you were thinking about from a design and design theory standpoint when you approached this open space and made it you know, into this beautiful garden. The purpose of this garden is color overall. And the color was coming from two very important sources that are quite different, the planters and the plants. So I needed to come up with a coherent strategy for making them look good together. And also I didn't want to be limited as to which plants I could use because it didn't fit. So I did the four quadrants in four different color schemes. That way I'd have a place for everything. They would look nice and coordinated and I could fit any planter I wanted. Yeah, so let's talk about the design elements of, of the four different quadrants. So uh -huh. we see something new or different in each one. There's a formality to it, but there's also this really whimsical, fun element to this garden that I think the containers bring in, uh, as well as all of these really, really bright colors. And the formality is this touch of gold that frames each one of these four gardens. But talk us through the, the design elements of each one of the quadrants, if you don't mind. We have four color schemes. The first one is pastels. I have colors that are purple, white, pink, and blue, which are very soft. It's accented primarily by white planters with the same color plants inside the planters. And what I looked for too was plants that gave you the most amount of color for the least amount of care. The second quadrant is dark and light. It's completely different from the first quadrant. And what I wanted there was once again, an opportunity to use different colors, but also something where I could show people how to use plants that are very dark like Laurel Petalum and very light like Abelia. Absolutely. Don't just put them up against dark green. Be a little creative with it, and this quadrant gives them those ideas. Quadrant three is very much my speed. I don't mind, I don't mind it looking like a little raucous. It's got some energy <laughs> to it. <laughs> um, quadrant three is wild. Yeah. It's bright, bright colors contrasted. It's orange, it's hot pink, it's red, it's yellow. And then also I was able to use fun pots like bright red ones. Yeah, wonderful. So in juxtaposition to quadrant three, we have quadrant four, which has more of like a, uh, it seems like more of a soothing, cool design. Uh, it's a little bit softer. It's softer. It's also my patriotic garden, and that is primarily red, white, and blue. Nice. <laughs> and I chose those colors because they go well together and because I had some red, white, and blue plants that I wanted to show off. Yeah, well, one thing, one thing I do love about this garden is it's the way that the formality plays, like I said, with you know, with all of this interest. So as you walk through here, a lot of formal gardens, you're basically just seeing a lot of repeated themes, a lot of the same plants. That's not what we have here. Mm -hmm. And so every different quadrant is a completely different experience. And there's a reason to revisit each one of the quadrants throughout the seasons, because you have different things in bloom at different times of the year. And it's gonna be so much fun seeing all of this mature, come back and see this garden next year and just see the way that, that the colors and the textures are playing off each other. The way we know this is gonna grow into a great garden is because it was rooted in great design. Well, I think one of the most important things to contemplate when we're looking at designing a garden is the way that humans are going to interact with that garden. And a huge part of that experience is, is through the paths. That instructs people as to, you know, where you're going to walk. And, and it also instructs what the views are going to be from the path. You can imagine a garden like this if you basically just ran all of these quadrants together. Well, then the only way the garden can be experienced is from the perimeter and you miss out on, especially these, these beautiful elevation changes um, that creates a much, much wider canvas. So the paths are super important. Talk about the path design for this garden. 
The path design for this garden is basically something that broke up the four quadrants. And I made them curved because I think curved paths in an informal setting like this home front yard are more pleasurable and they have a better sense of fit. The paths are three feet wide. I don't know how many people out there are going to be able to put a garden in that is this large. This is a four acre lot. Right. So if people are planting their front yards, they can make them much smaller. This pathway averages three to four feet wide. This other one is three feet wide. You can go down as far as two feet wide. This path is only two feet wide and it is constructed with very inexpensive stepping stones and mulch. This entire garden is only 10 feet wide, which might be a lot more suitable for a lot of people's houses. The pathway itself is only two feet wide and we use inexpensive stepping stones for pavers. There are other paving options out there. Flagstone is a more expensive paving option, or you can just use concrete pavers. Not as expensive as flagstones, but they last forever. Okay, Pamela, as we think about moving beyond the paths and, and whether or not they're, they're functional, ornamental, in my garden, my path is a flagstone path, but it's only about 16 inches wide, maybe. And I'm, I'm wanting the plants to creep in between the stones. It's basically a gardener's path. So in that case, I'm not trying to you know, design something like this garden where this garden could accommodate many, many people in the garden at the same time. My paths are much more pragmatic. When we look at, especially, some larger gardens, there are some really neat elements that we can add, like this circle right here. Let's talk about this design element. I always like to put circles, if I have space, where two paths intersect. And one reason for that is when you're standing at the beginning of the path, it gives you something that pulls you along. It's an accent that you see, and it makes you want to walk to get closer to it to get more information. Once again, the circles could be a lot of different sizes. This one is about six feet wide. This circle is larger. It's about eight feet wide. But when you get close up to it and you see the beautiful pottery that's in it, you can see why we put that much space into the circle. It's a wonderful way of creating that focal point. And one thing I love about paths too is when they're done well, they are leading you through the garden to something that is like a little pop or sometimes even a surprise. You, you follow the path, you go around a corner and then boom, there's this amazing container or a small water feature. And the circle at the center of the garden that conjoins all the paths, really it, it creates this wonderful centering focal point in this garden. The idea of keeping people walking along is the purpose of all these accents that you see along the different paths because you see a bench in the middle of a path and you see planters in the middle of the path, you see the circle in the middle of the path, and those are things that literally keep you walking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the idea of, of using a bench or a water feature or even like a bird bath as, as a destination for a path, I think is so much fun. Yes. Pamela, this garden does a wonderful job of demonstrating what containers can do. There's so many different ways that containers can be used in the garden. And right now, uh, right where we are right now is is a wonderful example of how containers are used to mark an entryway. It's, it's kind of this grand gesture of, of come see my garden. You know, look at, look at how amazing this is. And I think it's a wonderful way of using containers. Right, and you have two options to it. You can keep it simple and that would go particularly with gardens that are a little bit more modern. Um, here, because this was a very informal garden, I decided to just blow it out. Very, very strong containers at each entry. Yeah, so we've got four different entryways to this garden, and each one of them is different, and it kind of gives a nod to what the experience is going to be, you know, walking through these different quadrants. And so from whatever side of this garden you enter, you get a very different kind of welcome. And I think it's, it's wonderful, and the containers are the things that are making that statement. I've used them in other gardens, as you can see here. This was a garden in Florida. A very, very simple plantings in the containers and how that works equally as well. Some of it has to do with getting beautiful planters. Right. You can put simple plants in a beautiful planter and it's gonna have a lot of design impact. 
Right, well, especially these large planters. So most of these that you've used to mark the entryway, the containers are pretty big. And so there's no way that they're not gonna catch your eye. And then using these really bold colors really, really sets off the entryway. When you look at the main entry where we use those huge turquoise pots, we started out with different pots there that were smaller. I looked at it and Michael looked at it and for some reason, it just didn't give the kind of impact we wanted. I asked him if he could please come up with something that's huge. We put the big basket on top of them. That's what both of us were looking for. Let's talk about using containers as a garden accent. And, th and that's the way I use them in my garden oftentimes. But I like to use a container that's, that's almost like part of the, of the landscape or the garden. And uh -huh. so it's just, it's just perched out there. Um, and it's something that draws the eye like into the middle of a planting. And I think those accents are equally as powerful. I do too. And basically here, where we have the apex of the curve, where the curve is the curviest, is or where the curve goes into the most amount, that's where I put the, the planters. They have a sense of fit there. And I was not shy in this garden with any of them. They're smaller to a degree than the entry planters, but they're equally as dramatic. And I used the bright red ones in the bright quadrant and white ones in the pastel quadrant. and even the dark ones in the dark quadrant. And I use blue and turquoise once again in our red, white, and blue. Yeah, it looks, it looks fantastic. One thing those accent planters do too is it, is it gives you varying heights. So a lot of the plants that were used in this design are more dwarf compact plants and the ones that are gonna be big one day are not yet. And so the container also gives you some variability in the height and it really makes the garden just that much more fun. Let's talk about using containers to accent architectural features, like say a garage or you know the corner of a home. I think that they're also super impactful in that setting. Yes, the first place I like to see them in every house is on either side of the front door. Right. That gives it a big welcome. And I like to see sometimes those tall columnar pots there, I think just look better than the really short ones. It's proportion. They look better proportionally. Well, and, and a door is is a rectangle. It's a tall horizontal architectural feature. And so it would it would seem less appropriate to use a short squatty pot there. So when we think about the even the style of container that we want to use, think about ones that also accent the architectural feature that we're basically framing with the containers. And that's where the tall, more cylindrical, thin pots, um, they just do a better job of accenting that feature. Right. Then another place that everybody forgets, but it's been one of my most successful uses of containers, is around the garage. On yeah. every upright of the garage, put a planter. People love that. I mean, so suddenly the garage becomes part of the design element of the front of the house. Right. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that, that can be a, a less exciting side of the house. Oftentimes, the containers have a way of breaking up that monotony and, and integrating the garden into what oftentimes, like I said, is not horticulturally a very exciting part of the house. I want to talk about, finally, um, what I think is, is one of the most practical and pragmatic uses of containers, and that's the use of containers on like the porch, the patio, the courtyard. Not everyone has four acres like, like Michael does and some other gardens that we shoot. Many homeowners have just a very small area or they're in a condo and what they have is like a little courtyard or maybe like a little front deck. And, and that's where containers are a lifesaver. In many cases, it's the only way that you can garden uh, and bring nature closer to your, to your dwelling space. Um, so I think that it's a very, very important category for sure. From the beginning, I will say, go bold and go large. Yeah. When I first started in landscape design, I worked on a lot of jobs with, with the same interior designer. And I was going over what I chose before we ordered it. And every time he saw my pots, he said, get those pots, but make them the biggest ones they have. <laughs> and I said, they're going to be too big. And he said, nope, get them in here. I'll take care of sending them back. If it doesn't work, they're going to be great. I did that and I just learned and it really worked. So right. if I'm working around a patio, let's say the patio, any place I see a fence or a wall, I'm going to use containers as an accent to break up that fence or wall. If it's a 30 foot fence, sometimes I'll use three sets of containers or three large containers, which coordinate but aren't necessarily the same. If I'm looking at a house that has a pool, I'm gonna look at the pool. A lot of pools now have walls behind them right. with water coming out. I will without question put beautiful planters behind those fountain walls that coordinate with the tile that's placed 
on top of the wall. The other area are just the corners, soften the corners of the pools by using containers at every one of those 90 degree angles. The same thing is with your patio furniture. Put planters next to each chair. It completely changes your patio. It turns it, it into a garden patio instead of a concrete patio. Right, absolutely. I, I love your point about going big with the planters. And they're, yeah. they're also, just from a, from a growing standpoint, there's enormous benefit in having just that much larger a soil reservoir. Yes. So the smaller a container, the faster it's gonna dry out. And, and if you get a container small enough, it becomes impractical to manage anyways. And not only do the big containers make a, a, a bolder statement, there's so much more you can do from a design and planting standpoint, but also you save yourself a lot of potential headache with having to water that planter constantly. Right, another thing I've been doing a lot more in the last maybe 10 years, is instead of just using one pot, I'm using sets. Most of these planters come in sets of three. Right. And I've found that using the entire set also gives everything much more impact. Yeah, absolutely. Those are great tips, Pamela. Thank you so much. And look for great pottery. Right. Look for, I, I love these. They have wonderful shiny glazes. The glazes are consistent. Have fun with it. Right. Go for something that makes you smile. I totally agree. Pamela, last but not least, I want to talk about designing with plants in containers. So we've talked about containers, all the amazing things that we can do with them and how they work as, as accents and focal points. Now let's talk about approaching the plant design side of working with containers. This is something that you've done for your entire career. You've written many, many books on it. And I want you to just kind of demystify it. When we go to our garden center, we have this beautiful container and we've, we're now looking to select some of our favorite plants and make them work in a dynamic combination. What do we need to be thinking about? If you're in a garden center, for step number one, is I would sit there and scope out that garden center and look for one big plant that completely dazzles you. That's right. just gorgeous. That right. plant that you just have to have. But you take your big dazzler, you push it around, and you look for a smaller plant that looks nice with it. And then you look for another smaller plant that looks nice with it. If all three of them go together, you've got it. Yeah, and so if you think about the, the way that the plants just naturally work together, we have plants that are companions. So they, they are you know, similar from the standpoint of, of texture and color. And then we have other plants that are contrasting. And so they would be meaningfully different in most cases, like on opposite sides of the color wheel. So like what purple is to yellow. You know, so they're contrasting. Um, I think we also need to think about the, the contrasting textures. It's why yes. sometimes the center plant for me in a planter is a big ornamental grass. Right, and another thing that I think is, is really important is to understand that you need to consider your light conditions. Simply go through, look at the tags, or if you have the name, Google the plant, find out what the light conditions are. Right. It's very easy to get your mounding, your spiking, whatever you're using out of gorgeous shade plants as it is for plants that take sun. The plant tags, they, they give us a ton of information. They're very helpful. And so, yeah, make sure that the water needs and also the, the sunshade requirements, uh, that you're aware of that and try to make that as compatible as possible. Pamela, we always learn so much from you. Thank you so much for spending the day with us. You're welcome. I've really enjoyed it. Each week we travel the country, north to south, east to west, visiting some of the most exciting gardens, as well as talking to industry horticulturalists about design principles, new plants, and also how you can be most successful with your home gardens. We also love answering your gardening questions, so visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs, where every plant is performance tested, leaving you free to just enjoy. Find our award-winning shrubs at your local garden center. Memphis Wood Fire Grills, with the convenience of our patented IntelliBurn technology and convection oven cooking. Sear a steak, roast vegetables, bake cookies, or smoke meat using the power of Memphis Wood Fire Grills. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. 
Dram products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for lawn and garden. Available at garden centers near you. You have to rely on your gear. The way it feels. The way it does exactly what you need it to do. VF Pace. How Jaguar makes an SUV. Containers have an amazing way of elevating any garden design and creating beautiful pops of color that draw the eye through the garden. If you have questions about anything you've seen today, visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, even if you're a master gardener, there's always more to learn. So join us next week for more great gardening tips and ideas as we garden smart. Yeah.